want to talk about Facebook's latest news, capping a week of Silicon Valley that, uh, well, we won't soon forget. Two of technology's uh, most innovative CEOs stepping away from their post. Steve Jobs, of course, taking that leave of absence for health reasons at Apple. Eric Schmidt, he's handing over the reins to the co-founder of Google, Larry Page. And also, of course, HP, Hewlett Packard, revamping its board after the uh, scandal involving the former chief executive, Mark Herb. So we've assembled a taking stock think tank to tell us more about the future of the U.S. technology sector. We have Esther Dyson. Esther Dyson has been a Silicon Valley insider for years as an entrepreneur, investor, former editor-at-large of CNET. Esther Dyson's IT investments have included Flickr and Delicious, with a lot of punctuation points in between, as well as MedStory. That was sold to Microsoft. The two previous ones sold to Yahoo, as well as uh, participating in Meetup. Also, we've got Adam Johnson. He has been diving deeply into the stocks of the companies from our markets desks all week. And we have Anthony Bianco. He's, his book is about the boardroom drama at Hewlett Packard. It's called The Big Lie, Spying Scandal and Ethical Collapse at Hewlett Packard. Great to have you all with us. Esther Dyson, let me begin by uh, putting to you these changes at the technology companies such as Apple and Hewlett Packard and Google. Have we made too much of them, or is this really important? I think it's really important. In, in the end, and it's nice to see, this isn't about computers. It's about people and business and management. Uh, I would say Steve Jobs is a, he's, he's key to Apple, and he is indeed one of the most innovative CEOs. Eric Schmidt, I think to some extent you see him, he's probably going to take on more and more of the public role. But what they're really signaling Probably Google's biggest challenge right now is, is getting hot young talent. You know, people say, gee, is it turning into Microsoft and is Facebook becoming the new Google and whatever. Putting Larry Page firmly in charge kind of sends a message to engineers. This is a company that wants to be innovative. They want to hire you. Larry Page is a role model. Eric Schmidt, you know, he's great. He's spending time with Obama. He's, he's an important world citizen. But in terms of the Valley culture, Larry Page means a lot more. Anthony Bianco, the Valley culture. I'm glad that Esther Dyson phrased it that way. Uh, have you seen something about the expression of Valley culture sort of cleaning house this week, when you, at least when you look at Hewlett Packard? Well, I'm not sure if it's Valley culture and player corporate culture, really, in, in the largest sense. It's very unusual to see five directors come in at one time and four leave. In this, and usually it's a sign of upheaval, dysfunction. In this case, I think it's a very constructive move and that you had a company desperately in, in need of new leadership completing the process of putting that new leadership in place. Is this going to change the way Hewlett Packard operates, do you believe? Yeah, I think it changes the way it operates at the highest level. Uh, you have a new CEO, a new chairman, both strong figures, and now you have a board that's worthy of the challenges that lie ahead. And, and I think you'll see a, sm a smoother functioning decision-making process at HP. Adam Johnson, you've been tracking this all week for us uh, in looking at the reaction from investors do you think that they're looking at this as positive? Because you take a look at the price of Apple stock, also Google. It doesn't seem as though everyone's that energized about this news. Well, you know, I'll tell you something, Pim. If you look at what's happened to the revenues at Google over the past five, six years, it's pretty dramatic. And this, of course, is the concern. Revenue growth back in 2006 was up around 75, 80 percent. Again, we're talking Google's revenue growth. All right. So in 06, it was about 75 percent, right? Well, this year, according to the analysts, it's expected to be negative 5 percent. All right, so Larry Page has been running day-to-day, -day, will continue to run day-to-day. -day. He's, or I should say, he's been running product development. Now he's going to run day-to-day. -day. So what you're talking about is, is, is identifying product development with the day-to-day. -day. In other words, you have to grow this thing. You have to innovate it in order to have revenue growth. You cannot have people coming in and paying for a stock if revenues are going to be down 5 percent. So, of course, I guess, uh, Esther, the question goes out to you. How do they grow Google? How do they make Google matter, given that you've had dramatically slowing revenue growth now for about six years in a row? Yeah, some of, some of their businesses around the core need to grow. They're doing, actually right now, really innovative stuff in local, in mobile, with Android and all this. Esther Dyson, Facebook. We got the news confirmed. I have one and a half billion dollars going into Facebook that values the company at around 50 billion dollars. Right, first of all, you're a Facebook user. Do you think it's worth 50 billion? I don't think necessarily buying 3% at 1.5 means the whole thing is worth 
50 billion. It's much easier to buy those little chunks. It, it clearly was sending a message to Goldman. This is a very attractive deal because they're hoping to do the IPO. Uh, it's the whole market is a little toppy right now. People are going slightly nuts. It's it's exciting. It's fun, but I think people are getting they're projecting too far in the future. Too far into the future. But why? Because is Facebook not going to be this dominant player? Is it going to be some kind of new operating system that exists on the internet? They're going to be dominant, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be profitable. That This is a very volatile long-term market. You had MySpace, then you had Facebook, you had Microsoft, then you had Google. Uh, it's it's much easier to erode a lead now than it used to be. So you, you have things growing much faster and they're amazing. And the people who really benefit are the consumers. The consumers are benefiting from Groupon. They're benefiting from Facebook and Google. Uh, it's, it's a great market, but not necessarily long term as exciting for investors as for the customers. Anthony Bianco, turn your attention to Hewlett Packard, but in the same context. What do they need to do to be competitive in a world where valuations, at maybe not, as Esther says, maybe not completely for $50 billion at Facebook, but those are the hot investments right now, not investing in necessarily printers and servers, right. but investing in these new types of technology and the interface between well, retailers as well as uh, consumers. Of course, HP is a much older company than Google or Apple. It's hard to believe, but it once was as innovative as those companies long ago. For the last decade or so, though, it's grown by, in two ways. By acquiring other companies, ready-made, and squeezing costs out of them. So it's grown profits, but revenues have been relatively modest in, a, in an organic sense. What it needs to do is get back to R&D spending, create some new products, spend some money on it, first of all, because it was really squeezed under Mark Hurd. Come up with something new uh, and, and exciting. I think that's really the main challenge for the company right now. Adam Johnson coming up with something new and exciting. You heard uh, Esther Dyson talk about perhaps the frothiness in the market. Is there any inkling that this is what investors feel right now? Or are investment bankers just looking at the possible dollars that they're going to make by selling this to, well, the public investor? Uh, well, certainly, what a contrast, if you just want to talk valuation, between Facebook, in theory, with $2 billion in, in sales last year, 25 times sales, versus a Hewlett-Packard trading at about nine times uh, earnings. So very, very different valuations. And in fact, I, I just I have to go right back to Anthony, because you were talking about how do you grow this thing. I want to show you a pie chart. We'll call it the Hewlett money pie of the businesses. It's what, 32% uh, computers, it's 30% services, 20% printers, 18% storage, that's kind of dull. Maybe that's why it's trading at nine times. So, I mean, are you going to start doing more on the services side of the business? And is it that that software uh, bent and orientation that, of course, Leo Apotaker brings to it? Is that where you're going to have the growth, Anthony? Well, it, it does seem like the new administration there wants to move away from the commodity businesses uh, of printers and computers, PCs, more into software and services. I mean, th that seems to be the general thrust. But as you say, I mean, it's such a huge enterprise that moving the needle is going to be very difficult no matter what they do. Esther Dyson, as someone that knows about starting businesses and the kind of culture and talent that it takes, is it possible for HP to regain that kind of momentum? Because it seems as though if you're a hot engineer looking to explore your new idea, HP is not necessarily your first stop. Yeah, that's, that's the sad reality. The, the only reason that gives me pause, IBM did in fact make that kind of transformation, but it's going to be really, really hard. And especially since HP is competing with Google and Facebook and Twitter and five other companies you've never even heard of for all that talent. I want to get your thoughts a little bit more on Steve Jobs and Apple, because it's not as if Apple is the only company that has come out with iPods or music players or iPads and tablets. What makes Apple unique in its ability to reach the consumer through its retail channel, but also through its design and its almost lifestyle brand. Really, Steve, Steve is obviously key to this. He, he doesn't compromise. He doesn't listen. Uh, he doesn't and, listen. No, but he happens to have extremely good taste. And so nine... Is that rare for an engineer? It's just about impossible. He's, he's this industry's shining figure. He's the one you can put on Bloomberg TV and people will love them. Uh, so 
nine times out of 10 or 99 out of 100, HP, listen to your customers, go do market research, see what people want, test your designs. Steve knows somehow intuitively what's going to appeal to people. And he's, he's a fanatic about customer service. My mother, who is yeah, a nice little old lady, goes into the Apple store in Palo Alto. She wants to buy some little thing, a mouse, for $29. They treat her as if she was Queen Elizabeth. And they do that to everybody. It's, it's amazing. And is that something that can be cloned? Can it be taught? It is something that can persist beyond Steve. But there's an obvious question. How long will it persist beyond Steve? How much? It's, it's a really challenging time for Apple. And, and it's a really challenging time for Steve, too, which uh, well, we let's hope not it forget. obviously yeah. works and out. And I, uh, I hope he welfare. comes back and starts shouting at everybody again. All right, I don't want to leave it there. Thank you very much, Esther Dyson, joining us. Uh, Ed Ventures head, also Anthony Bianco. Thank you very much. Your thoughts about Hewlett Packard and Adam Johnson from our markets desk. Coming up.